So, this one, yeah, this one, this one, and definitely this one. Guys, welcome back to another video here from the off cut garage in sunny, hot Australia. People always want to know how the weather is like in beginning of February. Well, there you go. It will get a bit more cloudy this afternoon. You can see the clouds forming up already. But at the moment, I've got like 82 amps outside. It is shortly after 10 a.m. in the morning. Five kilowatt coming out. Of the solar well I definitely need it okay guys in today's video we want to we want to ask the question we want to answer the question actually which battery should you buy should you go with one of the cheap a crate so-called batteries like for example the well-known EVE LF 280k or even the 10,000 cycle Hythium battery cell? Or should you spend a bit more money and go with the certified A-grade battery cells from EVE, for example, sold by SFK in the US? And people ask me all the time, Andy, what kind of battery should I get? Fake A-grade, B-grade, storage grade? Or should I buy directly from the manufacturer EVE and buy certified cells? And SFK is actually claiming that their batteries have a higher energy output than all the rejected or storage grade battery cells. And I want to test this in today's video. And all these uh, three battery cells here have 280 ampere hours rated capacity, 3.2 volts, lithium iron phosphate battery, so there's no difference. But apparently the certified cells, they having a higher voltage during this charging. So... Oh, great. So even the certified cells measure with the same capacity as the storage grade batteries. If the voltage during discharging is really higher, we will definitely have a higher energy output of these cells. So we should see more watt hours coming out of these batteries here than through these ones. And the watt hours, the electrical work, is what makes your motor spinning, your lights turning on and your computer running. And with the CKE Tech tester here, the um, EBC A40L, we have the right tool to actually test and measure that. So what I'm going to do first now is fully charge all these three battery cells and then we will discharge them with 40 amps down to 2.5 volts and take the discharge curve. And once we have done this with all three battery cells here, we will overlay these three curves. And if we actually see a higher energy output of these certified cells here, the curve should be a little bit higher than the other two curves. And also the result in what hours the tester gives us should show a higher value. And I wanted to do this test for a long time, but I need to fully charge these uh, three batteries first now. And today is the right weather, full power sunshine. So let's get started, connect these battery cells and charge them up to 3.65 volts. Okay, all right, so I have set the charger to uh, 3.65 volts with 40 amps, 9 amp cutoff here. I haven't connected the computer yet. We don't need this for the first initial fully charge. I'm using the tint copper bus bars, which came with the battery cells here to get the best connection for my crocodile clamps here of the tester. And we have the voltage sense cables connected directly to the stud of the battery terminals. Okay, programming done. Let's get started here. I'm not sure what state of charge these batteries are in. I've got a rough idea, but it could take a couple of hours to fully charge them. And um, I want to do some more testing like internal resistance when they are fully charged to compare them and see if we can see any difference at all. So um, I guess I'll be back once we have fully charged these batteries and then we start the comparison. So, and while we are waiting for this to happen, we can have another look at these battery cells, if you can see any physical difference actually to the uh, certified battery cell here. 
So as you can see, this one comes with a full information sheet stuck onto the battery here. You can also scan the QR code and get the full history of this battery. It has the serial number printed on here. Apparently it has tested at 300 ampere hours. Yep, this is a 280 amp hour battery only. The voltage is 3.3 volts. Internal resistance 0.16 milliohms, I guess. And this has all been tested in December 2021. There's the manufacturer of this battery cell, the date of manufacturing, so it's almost a year old now. But I must admit I've got these batteries here sitting for months and I was still waiting for the 10,000 cycle um, Hythium battery as well to compare them to each other. So, and here on the Hythium battery, on the fake Hythium battery, uh, it doesn't give you any information at all, just the usual bullshit here which is on the battery cells, but it doesn't mean anything. The same here on the EVE LF280K battery, uh, just some sticker a QSO has put on here, doesn't mean anything. At least here we have a valid QR code, we have an invalid QR code here and another invalid barcode under this black top cover here as you may have seen in the other video which are linked down below. And here let's do a quick scan of the certified battery cell. Let's see, oh yep, there it is. So manufacturer is not EVE as I said at the beginning, I thought they were EVE cells, they are not, they are wrapped. So the manufacturer is Rui Pui, Rui Pui wrapped, there it says it, Rui Pui wrapped, so wrapped obviously. And um, well the model code is unknown, capacity is unknown, energy is unknown, so it gives us some information but not all of them, but it could be well that the... Um, that the app here doesn't have all the information available yet. So you can always um, take a normal QR code scanner of your mobile phone, scan the QR code, copy the code, go to the Google Power website, globalpower.com. They have a QR code decoder available. And here we are going to paste our scan and click on decode and see what this one says. Yeah, nominal capacity don't know yet, so it's not available in the barcode for some reason, but it confirms the same manufacturer, the same lithium iron phosphate, the same information as the app, but still no battery capacity available in this barcode. So, uh, as you can see, even the certified cells are not 100%, don't give you all the information through the barcode. Just wanna scan the EVE cell here again. Yeah, see, this gives us all the information. EVE power, lithium ion phosphate, LF280K model number, 280 ampere hours, 896 watt hours, production date, production city, and all the information. So this is as it should be with the EVE LF280K from QSO. This is a storage crate battery cell. Same as this one here with a totally invalid barcode and um, the certified cell is a wrapped battery yeah it's the wrapped 280 so i assume that means 280 ampere hours but it is actually tested with 300 ampere hours yeah and this is the whole batch here wrapped 280 and um, sfk also sent me the lf304 these are the eves I didn't know they sent me two different brands, but even better. So we've got an EVE, a Hythium and a wrapped battery now to compare. Okay, uh, let's, um, let's wait for the charger here to do its job. It may take a while. So, and this is our Hythium battery cells. And we want to do the belly test here. You can see how, um, how bloated this one is already. Uh, after maybe two cycles which I have done with it and here our EVE cell yeah that's a different bloating right it is bloated where the electrodes sit inside the battery interesting and here the certified cell very little gaps only it's almost flat so there's already a difference we can see mm, there you go already a difference one eternity later okay charging has almost finished with our what's the name wrapped wrapped 
280 ampere hour battery cell we should absorb down to 9 amps right charger has turned off and we're going to measure the internal resistance if we can read the display at all jeez come on going to turn off the bus bars measure directly at the terminal so not through the bus bars or nuts or washers or any kind of other material all right so positive oh nice well then make it like this okay we have 3.58 volt and 0 0.2 milliohms Do we get this a bit more precise here we go 0 0.185 oh my 0 0.2 milliohms measure again 0 0.2 milliohms and a third time 0 0.19 0 0.2 milliohms okay let's do the same on the ev lf 280k we measure the internal resistance here voltage may have come down a bit 3.46 and 0.2 milliohms as well so far we cannot see a difference in internal resistance when fully charged between the storage crate battery and the certified crate battery 0.2 milliohms resistance the hythium cell is still charging so we have to measure this later all right and we are live okay so i have now connected the wrapped battery cell wrapped is the name the wrapped branded battery cell to the cke tester i have also programmed the tester to fully charge the battery to 3.65 volts with one amp cutoff because this is what i always do and then discharge the battery with 40 amps down to 2.5 volts and measure the capacity and energy so i'm saying okay we've got this in our parameter settings list now and we start the test okay so we are now fully charging the battery to 3.65 wait until the current tapers off to 1 amp and then it's going to discharge the battery fully fully to 2.5 volts down to 2.5 volts okay and we are finally on the way to discharge this uh, 280 ampere hours apparently 300 ampere hour battery cell from wrapped um i guess it is 1 pm now uh, this will take about seven well i guess i will see you after dinner again for the first result of our test here okay uh have a good afternoon okay let's have a quick look at the discharge curve here of this wrapped battery cell steep decline in voltage plateauing flat 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 until 3.15 3.1 and then we see this steep cliff going down as usual so nothing to see here um, down here 284.4 ampere hours is 917.5 watt hours and probably the most important result is the average voltage it kept at 3.23 volts so this is an average of the whole discharge curve now 3.23 volts and we want to compare this to all the other battery cells as well so i guess um and i have i have done we have tested we have tested this damaged eve lf 280k already here a while back um so i've got the discharge curve and all the data of this battery cell already this is the hyzen 280 cell and we have also tested and charged and discharged this one already and i have the curve for this already on my computer so we just need to okay so let's measure the internal resistance of this battery here um down here there it is and you can see no you can't see it no there's no way to see it there we go the other way around works always okay uh let's check the internal resistance here this battery is fully charged 3.56 volts point two three milliohms okay i'll measure again a different location 0.22 milliohms and again on a third different location 0.21 milliohms 
So basically exactly what it says here on the label. So as you have seen, I have fully charged these three different battery cells here and we have measured the internal resistance and they were all the same. 0.2 milliohms for all of them. So far, nothing to see for the certified cell from uh, Rept. Okay, I guess this is the moment of truth now. So we have here the Rept 280 cell discharge curve and I want to open the other two discharge curves as well. And then we should notice a difference from this certified cell here to the other two A grade or 10,000 cycle cells or whatever they are. We should see a difference. Let's do it. Okay, let's start with the EVE LF280K discharge curve. And we want this one in a different color. I want this one in green. Yep, there's our green discharge curve and we will get rid of the current graph altogether. So this is just the voltage curve of the EVE LF280K. All right, let's open the next one. And now we use the Hythium discharge curve. Here it is, open, and we want this one in pink. Why not? Let's do pink. So there we can see a small difference here in discharging. The knee is not as obvious as in the green curve. See how steep this is? It goes almost vertical down and then bang into the horizontal discharge flat area of the curve all the way down. You can see a bit of difference here. So and down here we can already see uh, the top one has the wrong title here. This is the LF280K 3.23 volts and the 10,000 cycle Hythium battery apparently uh, has 3.24 volts average. Yep, 281 ampere hours, 286 ampere hours, 908 to 927 watt hours. Okay, so let's open the, um, the certified wrapped 280 cell, wrapped discharge curve, and we keep this one in blue and here it is okay um <laughs> so what i can see now is here let's have a look at the data first down here so lf 280k hythium wrapped 280 certified voltage 323 324 323 no difference at all energy 917.5 927.9, 908.5. And you can see the capacities here as well. All very close together. They are all 280 ampere hour cells. From here, I cannot see any difference at all, I must say. Okay, let's have a look at the graph. So the blue curve is our certified battery cell. Here they are so close together. Look at this. Here, just at um, around 3.15 volts, the certified cell is actually the one with the lowest voltage of all three battery cells. And then it gets a bit better as the green one. So, I mean, what are we talking about here, really? All three batteries are almost identical in their discharge curves. There's, there's not much difference at all. I don't know what the hype is in regards to certified batteries, but from what I can see and test here, they are all the same. I just had a look at my files here and we also have the charge curve for the EVE cell and the Hythium cell, but I haven't fully charged the wrapped cell yet. So I will do this overnight and we can have a quick look tomorrow morning if we can see any difference in the charge curve, but I really, I really doubt there will be any difference, any major difference, which um, leads to a conclusion that these certified cells are a lot better than the A-grade battery cells. Okay guys, so far there's a um, very interesting test from today, tonight and the days before when I fully charged and discharged the other two cells already. I have shown you this many, many times here on the channel, so I link some of the videos down below if you haven't seen how this all works with the tester. So, conclusion, verdict. Um, let's um, set this up in a different way here. 
Okay, so here we've got them again, the uh, wrapped cell certified battery cell, the uh, Hythium 10,000 cycle A grade battery cell and the EVE LF280K A grade battery cell as well. Measure the internal resistance and no difference. They all have 0 0.2, 0 0.21 milliohms. And I, um, I could not verify this internal resistance here. Maybe if we have the exact 3.3 volts here, I'm not sure at which state of charge that is, but they claiming 0.17 milliohms, uh, could not verify that. And then we did the full discharge to 2.5 volts down with 40 amps. And well, we have just seen the result here. The curves are so close together. Look at this. There's almost one curve. There's a tiny bit difference here at the beginning, but <coughs> the capacity, the energy and the average voltage are all the same. No difference at all. I must admit, we are charging or we are discharging and charging here with 40 amps only. I, I am pretty sure I have seen the videos from SFK when they did the high current charging and discharging like 100 amps or something that these ones are holding up a little bit better than the A-grade battery cells. And unfortunately, I have only two of the 280 and two of the 304 ampere hour batteries they have sent me to test. So I cannot really build a 12 volt battery here to do some high current testing with these cells. I've got only two, I've got only two cells here, can put them together to a six volt battery, but I don't have any equipment to measure that correctly. So. So this was one hand, but then on the other hand, we don't need to forget that these cells we buy here are for solar storage and we will never pull 100, 150 amps of them or only a very few people do that. Most of us will stay under 0 0.1, 0 0.2 C most of the time. And as we can see with um, 40 amps discharge, there's no difference at all between these battery cells. So. So the EVE was like 145 at time of purchase in March 22 and the Hythium was like 169 US dollars per cell and these ones here are, I just confirmed this on the website on the SFK website they are 820 dollars US but this is for a pack of four so they are like 205 dollars so 150, 169, 205 dollars for pretty much the same performance as we have seen. Um, I, I really like these terminals here because look at how flat they are, how much contact area they give us. And these ones are the, where is the bus bar here? And these ones are the exact opposite. We have tested this here on the channel in all details. I'll link the video down below. But um, look at this contact area we have here. It's just this tiny ring where the bus bar sits on, while here we've got the full bus bar contact to the terminal of the battery. So far better, but these ones have been tested with 250 amps. There, were, there was no heat building up on the bus bar terminal connection. So yeah, uh, and I'm also sure that these ones are far better matched than these batteries here. So the balancer in your BMS has a fairly easy job to do with these certified cells because they are so close together. And even a passive balancer with 100, 150 milliamp balance count should be able to keep them under control if you charge and discharge them. While with these other batteries, we can see the passive balancer BMSs are not suitable for balancing these, these cells. So we are reliant on the active balancer of the JK BMS or an external active balancer to keep these ones under control over time. Is it worth the extra $40 per battery to have a certified cell? Well, to be honest, I'm pretty, I'm very, I'm super happy with these cells I have here in use for the last nine months. They're all EVE cells, A grade, solar storage quality, I would say. And they are performing well. Haven't had any issues with these ones, nothing. And yeah, they need a bit more attention when balancing and everything. But you know, 
are we not all a bit nerdy to do all these battery stuff here? I mean, if you wanna if you wanna buy certified battery cells and put them together and forget about them, I mean, uh, why do you watch this channel here then, right? I don't I don't mind a bit of a challenge, a bit of maintenance, and a bit of more work to balance these batteries. So um, yeah, guys, I think <laughs> that's the video for tonight. I probably will continue to buy these storage grade batteries here for the time. So uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this test. Nevertheless, I will link all these three battery cells here down under the video and on my website as well. So if you want to buy these certified cells from SFK here, there's a discount code as well on my website. Just pop this in the checkout on the SFK website when you buy something and you get like 10% off or something. Here, I also put all the information, all the graphs, all the data on my website in the battery data column. I'll show you quickly here. So go to batteries, go all the way down to battery data and you will find instructions how this all works here in the header. And these are all the results, including data and charge curves and video links to my YouTube channel for all the battery tests we have ever done here on the channel. All the batteries, there's the Hythium, for example, the good old Palo battery cells here, the 7C <laughs> discharging, and even AGM batteries here we have tested on the channel. All the information is, are there, and I'll put these uh, three test results here on the website as well. You can download the graphs, you can download the data, the CSV files, download the software, and you can study the result of this test tonight here. Recommendation from me, I don't know, that is totally up to you. If you want to spend a bit more money and get higher quality bad results, totally fine. I've got no issues with that. Or if you want to buy the solar storage quality bad results, totally fine as well. I really can only do the testing here and share the results with you. So probably I really give you here choices, but no solutions. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Thank you for all your amazing donations to keep me cool down here. And we will see us in the next video again, guys. Until then, stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. And here comes the result from tomorrow morning. It's a bit weird. Uh, fully charged test, very quick one. Here's the result. Okay, so we have now fully charged the battery again. 284.9 ampere hours so this is very close to what we have discharged it with which is quite normal for lithium iron phosphate and we have a very quick very quick look before I let you go to the charge curve the full charge overnight uh, we can see the charge curve here voltage is rising sharply up until it plateaus here flat curve then it rises again at the end to 3.65 volts at the same time the current tapers off goes down to one amp as our cutoff what we have set in the software and down here you can see the parameters again of this test 2.52 volts where we started 3.65 where we stopped 284.9 ampere hours which is 960.6 watt hours 3.37 volts so totally typical charge curve here nothing to see here okay let's have another quick look when i overlay all these charge curves together again here we can see all three charge curves now uh, eve lf 280k the hythium 280 and the wrapped 280 got all the information down here when we started when we stopped the capacity of each cell the stored energy as well as the average charge voltage so again the blue line does not outstand in any form here while charging with 40 amps okay guys all these information are down below and on my website as well to download you have a fantastic day see you in the next video peace